The top callers were out in force the past two weeks. Gold took a sharp U-turn, and all you could see, read, or hear was how gold had lost its luster. The bubble had burst, the ride was over, and the carnival was about to close down. At one point, four gold headlines appeared simultaneously on Market Watch. Gold's top was easy to see. Gold bugs throwing in the towel. The truth behind gold's price. And this major headline, Gold Entering Danger Zone. How many times have you heard this before? Remember the correction in August from 1900 to 1500? Unfortunately, this kind of mass psychology works very effectively. How many people were scared into selling their gold insurance policies these last few weeks? How many people coughed up their good gold stocks? How many people are doubting their judgment and convictions about gold? More than I care to imagine. A wise and good friend of mine taught me a powerful way for reframing emotional, chaotic swings in the market, like the ones we experienced these past few weeks. He said, Robert, when there's blood in the streets and everyone is looking for the proverbial window to jump out of, that's when fear and downside risk is already factored into the equation. He said times like this are when he's least worried about the future. He went on to tell me the times he's most worried about the future is when everyone around him is in a manic high euphoria about where things are headed and why. When talking heads on TV are telling the average person they can be investment gurus in housing, technology, or whatever... Those are the times when he's nervous, on edge, and extremely cautious. Adopting this mindset and actually sleeping well when things appear to be crashing is a learned behavior. Responding in this fashion, in the moment, is not how human beings are naturally wired. It takes a conscious rewiring of our emotions and thought processes to see opportunity in the midst of chaos and act on it in advance. It means ignoring the collective mindset and peer pressure from TV, family, friends, and so-called experts. It means thinking for yourself and making your own choices. Compared to most people, it really means being a thoughtful, conscious contrarian. How did you respond to the volatility these past few weeks? Did you see it as an opportunity? Or did you beat yourself up and question your convictions and premises? There was probably some of that with everyone, but it's a matter of degree. We learned these past few weeks that those magical expectations most mainstream media base their reporting on have been rigged for the past five years. New home sales were often double counted, and housing sales must now be recalculated to the downside. And it took this long to figure out? Listeners to this show have known it all along. Remember, governments around the world are insolvent. Despite the rhetoric from the Fed proclaiming no QE3, guess what? There's going to be QE3 in one way, shape, or form. Countries around the world only have a tiny fraction of their assets in gold relative to their outstanding debts. Either their debts must come down where assets like gold must be revalued significantly higher to eradicate or at least allow countries to start servicing their debts again. Revaluing can happen by decree, literally overnight, or it can come through volatility and warfare in the marketplace, or, most likely, a little of both. There's no more practice. 
There's no more getting ready to get ready. We're in it for real. We're playing for keeps. At the end of the day, do you want paper or the real deal? If you don't know the answer to that question by now, you risk never knowing. You risk never acting. You risk everything.